In this tutorial, we're gonna be creating this procedural foil texture in Blender. Now, if you'd like to get the project files for this tutorial, as well as my other tutorials, and also help to support the channel, then you can do that over on my Gumroad and Patreon. The links are in the description. And then before we start, I wanted to show you the setup that I have. So I just have this icosphere and I just subdivided it so that it's very high detail. And then I also have a plane light and this is just gonna give some lighting on the side of the sphere. And then I have a camera and the camera is pointed right there at the sphere. And then also over here on the world to get some very realistic lighting, I added this Photo Studio 01 1K HDR, and this is on HDRI Haven. I'll leave the link in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI, and I just added this in as an environment texture. All right, let's get started with the procedural setup. All right, so I'm first gonna hit the new button to add a new material, and I'm just gonna call this foil. I'm going to press shift A now and I'm going to search for a noise texture and I'm just going to add the noise texture right over here. So what I want to do is I just want to give a little bit of a variation in the color just because I think it makes it look a little bit nicer. Now because this is foil this is going to be metal so the metallic value right here on the principled I'm going to turn this all the way up to one and then I'm also going to turn this roughness value way down to like a 0 0.2 so that it's very shiny. All right, now this noise texture, I'm going to plug the color up to the base color and you can see what it's doing. It's kind of making this like colored look. We don't really want this, but we will go ahead and change the colors in a moment. Now I'm gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on. It's a Blender add-on, it's built into Blender. If you don't have it enabled, you can go edit and then just go over here to the preferences. And then right over here on the add-ons, you can just go up to the search and start to type in node. And you can see that there's this node Wrangler add-on. So just check mark that and then we can use its features. And then we can just close the user preferences. So now that we have that enabled, I can select this noise texture and then I can press control T. And that's going to add this texture coordinate and mapping. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take the object and plug that up instead of the generated. And that way the noise texture will be placed around the object more evenly. And then what I can also do is I can control shift and click on the noise texture. And that is a feature from the node wrangler. So control shift and click. I'm gonna just control shift and click again so that we can preview the color and we will be changing changing the colors in a moment, but I did just want to change some of these settings. So the scale, I'm going to turn this up pretty high to like a 50. So you can see it's very detailed. And then I'll also turn this detail all the way up to 16. And if you zoom way in, you can see it just adds a little bit more detail into the noise. So now what I want to do is I want to change the colors before it goes into the principled BSDF because we don't really want these rainbow colors. We basically just want kind of like a gray kind of color. So what I'm going to do is press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node. I'm just going to drop this color ramp node right in here in between the connection and then I can hold down the control and shift key and click on the color ramp to preview it. So you can see that basically it's just made it black and white. So we can take these tabs here and we can add colors into them and that way we'll be able to control what the colors are. So I'm gonna click on this white tab and this one, I'm gonna make kind of a gray color and then I'm gonna make it a little bit blue. Now, if you wanted to, you could make your colors kind of more of like a yellowish color and kind of make it more like a gold colored foil. I like foil that maybe looks slightly blue, so I'm gonna do that. And then this one right here, the black one, I'm gonna turn this up. It's still gonna be gray, but it's gonna be a lighter gray. And then I'm going to make it just slightly on the yellow side. I think that helps. And then also this color right here, I think just making it very, very slightly on the purplish side looks kind of cool. Of course, you can do whatever your colors you want, but now I can control shift and click on this and you can see what it looks like. So it's basically just this metal, but just adding a little bit of noise in there just gives a little bit more variation. All right, now it doesn't really look like foil right now and that's because I'm trying to make that look of like foil that's been kind of crumpled up a little bit if foil was like super smooth it might look like that but I want to make kind of a crumpled foil look so to do that we're going to add some bump into our normal and then that'll make it look like it's kind of bumpy and it will make it look like it's been crumpled a little bit so what I'm going to do is actually take this noise texture and I'm going to press shift D and just bring it down and then we will plug the vector up to the vector here and we could also just bring these down to kind of center them now I can control shift and click 
click on this one to preview it and we can change this up a bit. So the scale, this is a little bit high. I just want to turn it down to like a 10 uh, so that those bumps are a little less big. And then the detail, this is way too high. So I'm going to turn this down to like a three so that it still has some detail, but not as much. So this noise texture, I'm going to use this just to give it little bits of crumples. And then below this, we're going to make another texture and have that be some bigger bumps and we'll add them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the factor and I'm going to plug this into the normal to just give it a little bit of bump. Now, if I control shift and click on this, you can see that doesn't look good. And that's because we need to convert this to normal data. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node. We'll just drop the bump node right here. And then the factor here, we want to plug this up to the height because we're just converting this through the gray and then it's converting it to normal data. So it's coming out here as purple and then that can go into the normal. So there we go. Uh, it's starting to look better, but the strength is way too high. And for this one, I think something like a 0.1 is pretty good. So you can see it's definitely starting to look like foil now. Uh, there's just a little bit of detail there that is pretty good. Now I want to actually duplicate this one more time because I want to add some bigger lumps, kind of like it's been crumpled a lot and there are like some bigger bumps as well as these little bits. So this noise texture, I'm going to press shift D and duplicate it one more time. We'll just drop it down here and then I'll plug the vector up to the vector here. Now I'm going to control shift and click on this one to preview it. Now this one, because I want those bumps to be even bigger, the scale, I'm just going to turn to like a five so that there's even bigger bumps. And then the detail, I think I'll just turn this to like a two, but the distortion, I'm going to turn this up to like a 0.3, just so that there's a little bit of distortion. You can see what that's doing. It's kind of just making it kind of a little bit swirly. So now I just need to add this in. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this bump and I'll press shift D to duplicate it. I'm just going to drop it down here. And then we want to add this noise texture into the bump along with this one. So if I control shift and click on this one, you can see here is one, but then we want to add this one in with it. So this first bump has already converted this to normal data. So that means this color or this normal can go right in here to the normal because it's already been converted, but this one, we need to convert this to normal data. So we're going to take this one, the factor, we're going to put that into the height and then it adds this one and converts this one into normal data. So now you can see we have this one and then we have a second layer of bump. And for this one, the strength, I'm going to turn this up to like a 0.5. So it's a lot stronger. So you can see there is our first layer and then there is our second layer of bump. We're adding them together and then that's going into the normal. So I can now control shift and click on this and we can preview the final material. And then if you wanted to give everything a little bit more detail or scale it down a little bit, all of these noise textures are plugged up to this mapping. So what you could do is just change the scale and then that's going to make the texture bigger or smaller. So to change all these at once, you can click on the first one, drag down, and then you can drag back and forth. And you can see that it's gonna change all the values at the same time. You can also hold down the shift key to make your movements more sensitive. And then if you wanna just scale the foil up, just give it a little bit more detail or make it a little bit smaller or bigger, you can do that. All right, I will just press F12 now to render out the final image. All right, there we go. So there is the procedural foil material. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in a future video.